Just gotta make sure everything. All right, cool. It's, so, it's popping. It's still there. It's still there. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I am Wesley from A Connection TV here on YouTube, the one place on the World Wide Web where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, definitely follow me on all my social medias, Instagram and Twitter at A Connection TV. I am here with this beautiful, cool man on the side of me. I'm going to let him do all his introductions. Uh, sir, say your name, where you're from and your age. I am James Patrick. I am from uh, Atlanta, uh, Metro Atlanta, because, you know, you got to be specific there. Some people like, oh, what? So Metro Atlanta, and I am 29. I turned 30 this year. All right. Turned to 30. Excited this. about it, too. <laughs> For you real. 30. What's your, what's, your, what's your zodiac sign? August, so I was born August 13th. Uh, so Leo, for sure. I actually got a tattoo, for sure. You got, wait a minute. Uh, you know, you, you got to do, wait, is this one? You got to do it's like on this shoulder or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Got, fellow got Leos, what's good? You. Fellow Leos, I am August eleventh. You. you are the thirteenth. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. You know now things are starting to make sense. No, look, <laughs> <laughs> makes more sense now. Right? It's starting to make sense because you know, look, so, not everybody can handle it. <laughs> right. Exactly. So out of nowhere, for the people that are watching, out of nowhere, I'm on Instagram. I'm scrolling through. And then this guy pops up on my screen. Don't know why, uh, but I see one of his videos, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, all right, cool guy. But I don't. I think it was regular, like a regular fitness video that I saw because I was like, all right, here we oh, go, really? uh, good-looking, straight muscle guy that's gonna pander to the audience. And I'm like, all right, whatever. But then I find out that you're not straight. So then I'm like, hold on, I'm confused. I'm like, what's happening here? And then you start, I start looking at more of your videos and I'm like, okay, this dude is really cool. You're talking about uh, fitness, and then you're talking about bottoms, and then you're talking about pops, and then you're talking about wearing jock straps and doing all kinds of things. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Why did you, or how did you find your space on Instagram? Nah, that... That actually was not the hard part. I actually chose Instagram because that's just what I like to use at the time. Uh, when I started that page, or let me say this, that actually was one of my old pages rebranded. <laughs> okay. And so uh, that's the reason why if you go back, some of that content actually goes, I think, to like uh, 22. But I didn't actually start building this company until November. And so uh, for me, it's like I had like five Instagram pages. And so I just was like, I like this platform. Like, I know how to use this platform. I know I could probably get more numbers on TikTok and all this other stuff. but this is what I like. And so, and same thing to follow suit with the business was that was just like, all right, cool. What am, what am I already doing? <laughs> like, mm. what, do, what do I do that I think that there's a need for? And uh, so for me, I already crack dick jokes on a regular. I already am like, you ask anyone who's ever lived with me or to include old employees that would come over my house. Like I'm always in boxers or like, <laughs> it's just like uh, sweats if it's cold. Like, and it's a, uh, and I always going, I'm already going to the gym, I already was helping people as far as like giving out fitness tips. And so it just was one of those things that it's like, and I looked into the space and I personally felt that there was a lot of queer trainers out there that just, in my opinion, weren't doing it well, uh, or uh, I felt that I could improve upon how it was being done. And so that's what I did. Interesting. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know a very many. I don't know if Instagram just... For my <laughs> algorithm, they just throw a lot of straight buff dudes at my page, <laughs> and I don't know them to be, you know, gay or part of the community. So seeing you, uh, to me, you're the first. I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't see anybody else that's doing it. Uh, okay, so outside of Instagram, let's get to know a little bit about you. Okay, yes. say so you're from Metro Atlanta. Metro. How does that, like, where do you move around as an adult to get to LA now? No, I'm actually in the Bay. So okay. uh, I may move to LA, by the way, because the weather is super nice all the time. Okay. So I may actually end up there, but it's uh, I'm in the Bay right now. And that's that's a whole I'll just give you the snapshot. I left Atlanta at, when I was 17 for the military, got out of the military and actually was in Virginia, had a buddy talk me into moving down to North Carolina. <laughs> and uh, that is where I went into this, this like the rough years of my life, if you will, before uh, 
building a, a real estate company and then ultimately getting burnt out with that and then moving over here back in March. And so March, I came to the Bay just to check out the area with a friend of mine <laughs> and it just grew on me. So I told him, I was like, oh, I'll be back. And I think it literally was probably like two weeks later, I packed up my car and just drove across the country. <laughs> Got you. So were you always into fitness? Did that start with the military or before the military were you into fitness? If I ever cross paths with this dude named Matt Webb again, I'm a, I'm a probably like, like give him a hug. He was, uh, he was my roommate and he's this short white dude with a Napoleon complex. And so every day was chest day, by the way, which I don't know if you could tell if that paid off years later, but it's like in the military, that dude, he's actually the one who got me in the gym just because I didn't really, I never really cared for it. And, um, for me, I was like, I definitely didn't care about like show muscles or anything like that. Actually, that's why my, that's part of why my body developed the way it did, but every day was chest day. And then I got out of the military and went back to, since I didn't have any social, uh, social person to push me, I lost all the, the muscle that I built. And so I went from 211 down to 183 and then had to refigure this out on my own. And that's, that's actually what gave me credibility to speak on what the, what I talk about now is just because I actually had to figure this out myself. The first time I was more just doing whatever he was doing, which is like, neither of us really know what we were doing, but it's like, we were just working out all the time and taking protein and not to mention the military feeds gives you a lot of food. So <laughs> it was just, yeah, that was really it. <laughs> So a lot of questions run through my mind. Um, why did you join the military? I was a honor student and we didn't have money for college, truth be told. And so I wasn't crazy, like, and I'm very open about this one. People were like, man, I joined so I could like serve. And, and let me say this, like, I respect those people tremendously because my heart was, I'm not putting my family in debt, just not. And so I'm going to join the military. I'm going to get a college degree out of it. Cause at that time I thought that was the path to success. Obviously things, uh, my, my understanding of the world changed as I was in the military, but yeah, that I joined for college money. From okay. being real. Yeah. Now, there's so many, uh, horror stories about the military. Um, was it a stereotypical kind of experience for a black man to be in the military or was yours, uh, your story more positive? my story was not positive actually um i actually got out at four and a half years and had a huge chip on my shoulder when i did for several reasons i was in the nuke program which most people have no clue what that is and that's completely fine uh, but basically they train you to to run a portion of the reactor and um i actually was number one i finished number one out of my class they wanted me to be an instructor i declined and that opened up a whole can of worms that uh basically they thought I was taking it for granted, which, uh, because there are a lot of people that would literally kill to be in that spot and, uh, you don't say no to the military. And so, um, and let me say this with my understanding of the world, then it just made me more bitter and angry and, uh, to add on to the anger I had from childhood. And so all it did was just make me not trust anybody and I'm gonna do my own thing and that type of thing. Hence me going into business. Right. But it's like, with what I know now, it was, uh, my understanding was very limited. And so it wasn't, I didn't necessarily encounter um, a lot of, let me say this, if there was racism there, that wasn't what I was focused on. And so I, I kind of like tried to uh, sidestep that. And by the way, that's a whole another conversation in itself, if you actually want to unpack that. But uh, my experience, okay, cool. All right. So let's just do that now. Um, hmm. Growing up, in the environment I grew up, I am so grateful for my older brother because uh, he is literally the only male influence uh, that I had outside of like a couple people in church, but he's the only one that I actually respected. So I got to see him going in front of me, navigating life, and he went uh, a much more aggressive route than I did. Um, and so he had different problems than I did. And I just knew uh one one understanding that i found was and this is just me i know i'm very aware that racism exists i'm very aware of it we we actually lived in a kkk neighborhood had windows broke out and all of it um i understand that that's actually a real thing for me though um when interacting with other people and especially other black people i have found that focusing on that is oftentimes it, it will create a um
know it's there. I use it. It's all a game. I use it. Uh, know it's there. Acknowledge that it's there. Still play the game smart. In which case, uh, I'm going to be real. As I've played the game the way that I've played it, the, the same thing that a lot of people say, oh, man, I can't do this. Or let me say this. They hold me back because I'm black. I am in a partnership on a mobile home park right now. And the only reason why I got that is because I was young and black. Because the old dude was was old and white. And he, again, he had, his heart was to help a young black dude. Okay. And so here's the thing is I can either choose to focus on how it's limiting me or I can play the game smart. And obviously opportunities open up for everybody as you're playing. And so it's uh, that's just my belief on it. And as I, I don't want to pretend like it's not there because it is. Right. But it's like, I think that if you focus on how it's holding you back, man, you're you're missing a lot of opportunities. That's a great perspective. And I completely understand that. Would you do the military today? Hell no. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> hell no. If they ask me to come back, hell no. Uh, now, are you asking if I would do it uh, the first time through? Um, me being me, no. Do I recommend it to other people? Yeah. Just because I'm being real, like as far as getting out after four years um, with the stability that it provides, not to mention people assume that you're more responsible and all these other things that come with it Yeah. Um, outside of, and God forbid you do get disabled or you get injured, but I'm just, I'm be real. Most people that go through the military, you do come out with some percentage of disability. It's like, it's not a bad hand to have after four years, especially since most young people don't have direction. <laughs> so it's like, rather than wasting time, dude, like you work four years at anything, dude, I'm especially if we comparing it to a freaking degree, like, <laughs> I'm be real, like, uh, I got out of and I got to see this. It was so crazy. I thought I was missing out because I went to the military route. Mm -hmm. I went in by the time I got out at 21. I was my base salary was 50 with overtime. I was making 100 K. My other friends, <laughs> they went the college route. They all got the sheets of paper. A lot of them still had to go at entry level jobs making 30, 40 K. And I, I, by the way, I have not since I got out of the military personally, um outside of the years that i was like homeless like it's like since i actually kind of got my shit together it's like making money is like i'm happy i went that route for sure i okay. and, and stacking it against my friends that went to college i am very confident that most of them i've outperformed them at least financially very confident okay there you go so <laughs> i mean nothing else to say about that <laughs> Oh, the military and then i hear homeless were you homeless after the military or before oh yeah i don't know if you heard that man there was a lot of arrogance and bravado and like a lot of ego that had to be beat out and so for me man i made a series of decisions that that just were not smart because i had misconceptions around money this is one of the craziest things and so again um i wasn't taught money as most people aren't taught money or let me say my mom taught me what she knew um yeah. And uh, so I had this belief. Why do I need credit? Because I'm gonna be a motherfucking millionaire. Excuse me. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a millionaire. Like what you mean? Like I don't need credit. And I am a very resourceful person. So I've built what I have now without credit, which is again I have a portfolio and the mobile home park and everything. So I've done that without credit. But I'm like, dude, like it took me years to undo all the damage I did because I had a misconception. <laughs> I just didn't know. I did not understand the game around money. <laughs> so, so you were so you were homeless before military or after military? After. So okay. I got out. Yeah, I got out and was making money with these jobs, but because I was like so heck bent on like I'm gonna do my own thing, like this doesn't give me enough time for me to start a business. And like, <laughs> like I was like I was not very grateful for any of the opportunities that were presented. And so I went through actually the, my two years after the military, I went through like eight jobs. Like, no joke. Like, I just was like, and just, oh, it's all going to work out. <laughs> like, <laughs> just blind confidence. Like, I, I got this. Uh, you can only do that so long before you run out of one options, uh, two, your reputation's crap. And um, <laughs> like, three, like, it costs money every time you're changing. And right. so, yeah, so uh, I was living in my car for like a year and a half. And uh, that was a whole thing, man. It, that is actually that is what opened up the door for me beginning to, or that is part of what opened up the door for me to start to undo a lot of the false beliefs that I had around me and the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So 
I see you. You're uh, a cool guy. Got a cool <laughs> head on your shoulders. You go to the gym. Masculine guy, Leo. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm very interested on two things. One, do you believe in labels? Do you attach yourself to labels like gay, straight, bisexual, pan? And if um, so, what is your label? Quote unquote. I don't. I don't personally like to be labeled. I do use labels because I understand they make other people feel comfortable. <laughs> and so, <laughs> just being real. And so yeah. it's like I put on my page. It's like, why am I an openly bi guy? Like, so it's like if I am going to to pick one of the labels, that one, because uh, I am attracted to both guys and girls, and I think um, both both body types uh, have different features that are awesome. And so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So my, my, and so going into my next kind of area of questions, because a lot of people don't really understand that everybody has a different path, um, mm -hmm. how they are sexually expressing themselves. And so a lot of people believe that you're born a certain way. A lot of people believe that you come across certain attractions as you get older and then you attach yourself to that. What kind of lane do you follow where, when you were young? Were you attracted to guys and girls, or when did that path toward attraction to both align? Yeah. I don't know if I was necessarily like, that's a very interesting question that I haven't thought about much. But I can say this, since I started watching porn at 13, I was watching a, a blend of, of straight porn and gay porn. Okay. And just, it was like, I didn't. I obviously, let me say this, because, and I say obviously as if you know, all of the things that go into that i did not feel i felt ashamed of it because i was like oh my god i like guys like, <laughs> and god forbid someone call me gay <laughs> but it was like yeah man um yeah very as soon as i started basically realizing that my equipment could do more than just pee man it was it was definitely both sides of the field there <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> okay well that, that sounds like a very interesting way of knowing yourself at that young age because um there are a lot of people including myself that lived in a world where we couldn't even express the fact that we like dudes um and mm -hmm. so if we ever attempted to like a guy especially in my family it was kind of like banned like you couldn't do that yeah you know, same with mine okay so you you, you yeah, yeah no 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 so here's the thing what i chose to do in my private time with the door closed that was me uh how i went and was operating on the outside and this is part of probably why i present the way that i do is uh especially so like i grew up pentecostal church like i'm going to hell like you know all of it like it's just not it was it, 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 that's gay the the f word that nobody can say because it's always bleeped out but everybody knows what i'm talking about like you know like it was a lot growing up um in the south like but to where it's like dude like it wasn't even worth telling nobody <laughs> it wasn't even worth the 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 let me say this and i applaud everybody nowadays who feels they can be bold enough to come out and tell people like when they're young and stuff but that was not my story i was it was not only was it not cool but i i wanted my mom's love and affection and everybody else to still like love and respect me and i knew that that would be something that would shatter the world <laughs> like it's not mm -hmm. I do, it was not worth even throwing out there. So And yeah. so how are those personal connections, those family connections with you today? Yeah, yeah. Now the now it's great. Everybody knows, but that's even a recent thing. That's within the past probably like six months. Like where it was like it got it was this slow um because at first it was okay, I know that I know what I like, but no one else can know what I like. <laughs> and then there's a, then there's the experimentation but again like this is my business is my business and especially the more i went into uh my own path and earned my own you know to where i can stand on my own feet financially like i don't need nobody for nothing it was harder for people to tell me stuff so it was just this empty black box around like whatever my like relationships were like and and also too because i was like I only had girlfriends up to a certain point. So it was like, I was still playing the role. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, then it, it came like, all right, cool. Then I told one of, one of my homies, man, and he actually was so cool, like with how he received it to where I was like, okay, cool. This huge thing that I was afraid of is not the, it's not the end of the world. 
Right. And then I told, but, but here's the thing. Then the next friend that I told that I grew up with, he took it really wrong and actually it did. So it did. So I was like, Oh God, like, but I had that one positive. Right. I had that one positive. And also too, my give a craps around it was, was diminishing too. <laughs> uh, and so it was the combination of all of that, that finally I started to just kind of be, this is me to everybody that I interfaced with like work, let me say this, uh, that was, I guess, a friendship to where it was like, it would come up. And then second was, uh, it d degrees of intimacy. The closer you were to me, like the last, the last few were to find out, honestly, to where my brother and my mom were the last two, just because I, I knew that if I told them, uh, and my brother, like, I don't think he's going to be upset with me saying this, but he, he actually mentioned, he's like, dude, like if my son ever turns out gay, that's not my son. And I know he was like, ha 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 about it. But like, <laughs> I never forgot that. <laughs> right, right, right. And you know, it's like, and like, you know, my mom, like always being in the church to where I knew I was like, dude, like this may actually be the end of our relationship by me sharing this, but it's worth it. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw it out there. And my brother, man, that dude is, is, he is really cool. Like he actually, it, you could tell like there was a pause, gears turning. And then, of course, everybody already, already knew and was just waiting on me to say stuff, right? But it's like, he loved me enough to where it's like, I, I knew it was like, he, he followed through with, with keeping the relationship. And then my mom, of course, like, she, she already knew too, of course, right? Was just waiting on me to, supposedly. But yeah. Right. So. It's like one of those <laughs> things where it's like, I was just waiting for you to tell me. I already knew. Of course. The no, time, sure. They, like, didn't want it to be true. It's like they knew they, they had, like, thoughts. But they're like, yes. <laughs> Not my son. It could never. No, for sure. No, <laughs> no. Look, especially after I had my daughter, man. Like, <laughs> it's just like, oh man. <laughs> no, that okay. is perfectly said. I think I think a lot of uh, people, especially in the black community, have similar stories, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Me, uh, with my oh, family, sure. even even today, like my mom always has this extra weighted concern about how I live my life with other men versus women, and like. All humans can catch everything that's out there. So right. it's like, right. it's just interesting how the mind works uh, with people that are <laughs> gay. But yeah, when, when, what age were you? Because you said that there was a point in your life where you just didn't care who knew and it was just you going to be living your life. Uh, what yeah. age were you at when that, when that thought process came into play? Uh, my give a, my give a craps really started to diminish somewhere between 26 and 27, 26 and I'm okay. 29 now. So 26, right. the, here's why, um, my whole world was built around like being somebody, becoming somebody, that type of thing. And what happened was, uh, my first year that I made a substantial amount of money, what was actually way more than I ever thought was possible um that actually allowed me to start to like breathe like no kidding and i know everybody's path to feeling stable is different but for me i needed to i needed to find the security around money first and so i did and then i'm be real like after that i was like oh god like i don't even know what i like like what because <laughs> i was like and no no kidding i was so focused on that that i was like and then it was the oddest thing i realized i was chasing everybody else's goals like that was the that was the weirdest thing to, to realize. I was like, man, I was chasing everybody else's goals. I'm not doing anything that I actually like. And I think that was actually what part of what prompted me a couple of years later to get out of real estate, even though I was making really good money. Was uh, I was like, dude, like I'm doing like, why am I even doing this stuff? Like I I just started to really kind of get into who is James, what is James like, and kind of that whole struggle with identity, dude that probably making money was the first part that allowed me to actually like start to construct like the rest of the world because until then i just was like i just wanted to to feel like i was winning somewhere I yeah know. that that makes sense i think one of the uh things for me when for the length of time that i've been doing this on youtube and expressing myself freely and you know people coming up to me and saying hey you know, I, I like hearing your stories and, and, you know, what allows you to be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Um, you're saying something similar in the sense of once you found that sense of security around yourself, realizing that your life didn't depend on anybody but yourself, then you yes. start to appreciate who you are <laughs> and, and yes. who you are. And people's opinions 
don't really matter, especially yes. when you start paying your own rent and your own bills. It's like, what? <laughs> well, so not only so I had, again, I'd been doing that since 17. So it wasn't. But here's the thing. I think because my bar was so much different than, I guess, a lot of my peers, like I just didn't feel any version of adequate until I was making a good amount of money. And okay. it was like, like, I just felt like I'm like, I just like, man, I'm a loser. Like, I'm like, <laughs> gotcha. and, uh, and then it's like, so then I realized like, dang, man, I've done this. Like I'm, it, I'm proud of me. Yeah. Was, yeah. was the first step for me. I'm proud of me. And then years later, by the way, um, this is so man, um, identity, depression, like all of those types of things, like were unlocked at different points, dude. But I'm telling you, dude, like it was a series of events for me for sure. Awesome. But anyway, man, um, you're just getting back on track. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Openly, um, openly by now, though. Like, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Instagram has become interesting over the last few years. <laughs> and, you know, uh, the way that they allow for people to freely express themselves is, is, is been fun. <laughs> uh, you are very expressive on Instagram. I, and I really think that it has a lot to do with you being a fellow Leo. Um, <laughs> Leos definitely have a way of, you know, saying how they feel. <laughs> where is this, where is this coming from? This explosion of self-expression <laughs> and self-awareness and, oh, by the way, I'm doing this in the nude outside looking at the sun. Like, <laughs> just, where, just calmly, just staring off into the distance naked out of a window, just like, so right. just for this perfect photo. Right. Uh, <laughs> Funny story, man. After I wanted to get out of real estate, uh, I started that page uh, just posting pictures of me in underwear. They were not tasteful, right? Like you think my my stuff now is like edgy. <laughs> like I was like literally like basically with a hard on in underwear, dude, on on Instagram, man. And it's just like because I'm I've never let me say this, and I've actually thought about starting on the fans, those types of things. Uh, decided not to only because of uh, the long term plan. By the way, the point. I was in a relationship at the time. Um, the girl I was with was was not cool with the way that I was expressing myself. But I'm gonna be real, like I will try stuff, and then like I can adapt. Like, but I, I if I want to do something, I'm a, I'm gonna put energy into that. And so that's actually it was a series of just like when well, I started putting out stuff in my underwear, and then um, when I moved over to California after that relationship didn't work, because uh, which funny funny thing when given an ultimatum so surprising right for this whole leo thing right so surprising when given an ultimatum i tend to no <laughs> like, don't give me an ultimatum because i'm probably going to disappoint you <laughs> right. i'm just being honest uh because right. i i take it as uh if you loved me you wouldn't put me in this position so i'm being real it's like i'm gonna i'm going to choose me and my goals sorry <laughs> um anyway moved over here to to California and then had an agent reach out to me. So I was like going to be a model and then um, had a weird experience with a photographer and then uh, thus starts this page. Oh, after me going to a gym and I wanted to bring, by the way, this is a whole thing. I was going to build this company originally just to funnel leads to a gym. And <laughs> what happened was uh, when I, when I went to talk to the business owner, he goes, uh, yeah, man, just build me a business plan. And of course, like, we'll talk about it. And I was like, all right, cool. So I put all this time into building a business plan. And when I go to present it, he goes like, uh, I was like, hey, man, I have it distilled to, to is this should be like a seven minute conversation max. But I do want to actually show it to you, right? He goes like, no, just send me an email. And I'm like, no, dude, the depth of information here for this plan, like, I'm not going to basically like give you, that's not what's going to happen. Either you'll take this meeting or I'll build this. <laughs> and of course, you 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 already tell with my personality, man. When he was like, "No, nah, man, I just want to see the email." I was like, "Sounds good." And we don't need to go into numbers, but I'm very glad that that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you so when you uh, speak on uh, co the company, your company, what is your company? So uh, the Instagram page is uh, phase. It's actually phase, this is a whole thing. This is phase one of three. It's a three phase business. This is literally just me building a lead magnet. Okay. And I know this sounds uh, very interesting for people who don't know, but it's like why that page is the way it is, is I am building a community 
that is it. I want people to be entertained, learn about fitness, uh, get healthy if they want to. It is backed with a personal training company. And so it's like people come to that page, they get entertained. Uh, some of those people actually directly reach out because in the bio it says, I, I think it's like, in a, this might be a verbatim, I don't know. I help small queer boys <laughs> build muscle to become bigger queer boys so they can strut around beaches, bars, and bedrooms more confidently. So I have people who reach out to me just for that because that's what I want to help people with. Some of the people actually reach out for weight loss and, um, and I help those people. And so um, it, it has become very profitable very quickly uh, because apparently I'm entertaining. And so uh, there's, <laughs> but this is a, but this is, there's a, let me say this, there's a long-term plan to this. And so I think it's very interesting because I'm approaching this as a business person, not an influencer. And so it's like, um, it's very, it's, it's very fascinating. I think people are expecting me to do influencer stuff. Like, I, let me say this, I am grateful for everybody that has chosen to follow the page, but growing the page is uh, a part of a much larger plan. That was, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, that was very, that was so Leo. That was so, what? I what? Love, it. I love it. Your whole explanation was so Leo. Like, I just love it. I just love it. Yeah. Yes, baby. I'm gonna have to rewatch that then to see what I did. Yes. <laughs> you go back and you see me immediately laugh. I'm like, he's a Leo. Like, he's a Leo. I start, you know, I, I communicate to certain, uh, well, majority of people, I communicate the same way. Okay. Very confidently, very confidently, <laughs> as a matter of fact, right? Nothing okay. that I say um, is just by, by chance or yeah. perhaps, you know what I'm saying? I always speak with intention. And a lot of Thank you just don't get that they don't understand that they it's like no that's can you expound I, on that please like because i think <laughs> the more people should communicate like that like there Listen, are, I, was on the phone, I was on the phone yesterday with somebody well no i wasn't on the phone yesterday i was sending a text message and so you know how people get overly emotional because mm -hmm. they get into their feels about receiving information via text message so i was very as a matter of fact and direct and the person was like, well, I just have this feeling that you're coming across like so like rude. I'm like, OK, <laughs> I'm like, why don't you just call me if it's really that difficult right. um, to understand what I'm saying? But anyways, um, <laughs> I, 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 I love your communication and the way that you talk. So what is the funniest thing that you've received in a DM <laughs> from these people on Instagram? Because let, let me tell you. I always see people on Instagram and they be getting all upset and mad about the type of stuff that they receive on Instagram. And I'm like, look here, if y'all promote this kind of stuff, y'all are going to get this kind of stuff. Yes. I can just imagine yes. what is yes. flowing through your DM. So what's the funniest yeah. thing that you've gotten from somebody? Uh... <laughs> so look, for me, um... It's not the fact that you sent me a nude that you were like, you know, okay, like you bent over, like it's, it's the fact that there were so many questions that were raised for me. Like, I'm like, dude, like the man like clearly is like, okay, cool. Like you don't care about shaving, fine. But it's like, why your hair that curly? Why you, that position is not attractive. Like, it was, like, it was just like, what's going on in your room right now? <laughs> there was a bunch of like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm so there's like, I'm serious, man. There's like probably about 10% of the stuff, like 10% of the messages, like, like when you market the way that I market you again, like you're saying, it's expected 10% of it is just going to be uh, dick pics and, and, and butts. And that's okay. <laughs> like, because but, again, but, but at the same time, I feel like, and this is to the people, because I get some mm -hmm. crazy things in my DMs too, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm talking to the people, please listen to this portion of the video. Please. Please. There is a way to say hello in a DM. There is a way to receive um, <laughs> any kind of emoji response from us in a DM. And what we put out there is not what y'all are sending us. So I feel like if you just take a minute, take, take a second to, to think about what it is that you're sending and the message that you're trying to give back, I think... 99% of the time, uh, the response that you receive from people like us will be more on the positive and less on the questioning, okay? But like, yeah, if, if if I watch your stuff, and I do watch your stuff, 
there are moments where you say, I would love to see uh, send your butt pic or send something, yeah. something, right? You say that, you say that, but people take that as like, oh, no, yes, no, no. I'm about to go ahead and. No, no, no. <laughs> that, so hold up. Here's the thing. So we just recently started to do, uh, basically, I was already doing like hump day. I'd like show pictures of people like, you know, shaking, dude shaking, shaking butts, right? Because it's hump day. You know what I mean? We need to smile on hump day, right? And I was like, you know what? Let me use this as an opportunity to like start shouting out different people's pages. So, you know, send people to their page, right? And so I was like, oh, let's do that. So I was like, on Saturdays, what we'll do is we'll put out a request for like, for like, you know, hump day pictures. And of course, my brain is thinking, this is, this is easy. Like, this is very clear. Like, everybody's seen what's already been out there. Like, this is too easy. But um but here's the thing that was still me me asking for it so whatever you get you get what i'm referring to are the we have never exchanged so when you reached out to me we had a normal conversation turns into you know where it is now i am a normal dude we can talk <laughs> what we have not had exchanged one dm and i'm getting dick pics butt pics like i'm like bro like that and i actually i'll be like is this genius is this how you say hello to people? Like, you know what I mean? Or is this like, and I'm like, bro, like, so in some of the DMs, I'm like, man, like, I don't think that you would have said that to me unless there was like this, this screen barrier right here. Cause I'm like, the way that you approach me right now, just the way that I carry myself, like, all the, like, I don't think that you would step to me that way. Just be right. <laughs> right. like, nobody walks <laughs> like, you and turns over and bends complete over and spreads it and, and then be having specks of like lint and stuff up in there. I just don't understand, like, I, hey, hey, without a hey, look, without a without a without a what's up, uh, like, and here's the craziest thing if you do anything on my page, most of the time I'll reach out, hey, welcome to the page, start off the conversation, usually, right? But it's like, so there's been nothing, and it's just like, boom, dick in the face, yeah, just boom, yeah. ass, she, ass cheeks open, excuse right. me, butt cheeks just, just, just there. Like, I don't and understand I'm like, that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just been, it's been fascinating, and it's like so. Again, you take the ten percent as a cost of doing business, and you're grateful for the the greater maximum, which are people who actually want to be helped, right? Yeah, like that's cool. So, and 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 to the people in the back, all that we are saying is there's a time and a place, and your first <laughs> message to any of us should never be that, especially without um, you getting a hint that it's warranted or wanted. Um, but hey, you know, everybody communicates differently, so it just <laughs> is what it is, I guess. Mm. I want to applaud <laughs> you for uh being as funny as you are and as bold as you are on uh Instagram. Uh, and I see that you're starting to get a little bit more risque uh with <laughs> your posts, and I'm like, hmm, what is this leading to, sir? You have to have. Dude, <laughs> you, have, you have one full video where you were walking and all that was on the screen was cake. And I don't yeah. remember what you said. I think it was something like <laughs> I couldn't remember. Butts are like boxes. <laughs> and I'm like, this dude, this dude is hilarious. I'm like, what is he doing? And then you yeah. had another post where you were talking about um the Chinese spy balloon was was <laughs> blown away or something, and you had a picture of a person bent completely like i was like what's happening here sir what's happening? okay 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 <laughs> all right so all the stories are just stuff that i find on like just scrolling my feed that i share that i think is funny right um so that was actually when i saw that i was like that's hilarious <laughs> um and so i shared the uh or like it's like something that i'll see like uh for example the pig with his nose in the water and it like he was blowing out the water and it sounded like uh basically like <laughs> what I was like, <laughs> i'm like that's exactly what it sounds like after you bottom right, <laughs> right there <laughs> you know stuff like that <laughs> like so that's what the stories are as far as the actual the reels with me actually creating stuff it's um how do i talk about so usually most of this is like all right something that is on my mind or like a experience that I've had or something like that. Um, and those are usually the easiest to just crank out because those is like within a ideally for me, 10 to 30 second clip, just like put out something that is clearly going to be geared towards entertainment. And so I want to make it an entertaining video mm -hmm. um, for the ones that are informational though. Th those are the, the fitness, the informational ones. It's okay. 
I want to genuinely respect the people's attention that are following this page. And so how do I take this like gym topic that every other freaking, like you're saying, straight personal trainers out there just doing like videos talking about it, like, well, look at me. How do I make this like entertaining for a, a queer dude? Cause I'm like, that's, that's primarily who follows the page and also too. So it's mostly me just trying to be respectful of people's attention. And so actually those, those are the ones that I'll spend probably like, not always, cause some of them are just like jokes, but it's like, uh, so like, I think I did one that's like to have a nice chest without chest flies is like expecting uh, to find a masculine man without a hairy asshole. Like, so that one was easy just because it's like, you know, that one's like, but uh, for the, <laughs> for the rest of them, it's like, uh, you actually have to like put intention to make this thing that could be boring, entertaining. And do it's you, just mostly respecting the audience. Do you like hair down there? Um, like, and have grown to be, uh, I've grown that it's a necessary evil for the dudes that I like. I don't like, and this is just my opinion. Everybody likes what they like. I like having two, uh, males. I don't want to say it. Like, I know there's probably a better way to say that, but I like two, I like guys. Um, and so for me, I like interacting with guys that are extra feminine, like, cause it's entertaining for me. And like, we can have a good conversation, but if I'm going to be with somebody, I like a dude. Uh, and so it's like, uh, even Lewis, which by the way, he is Mexican. Mexicans are notoriously hairy. He has hair around his asshole. It's a necessary evil, uh, for me to do what I need to do. And so it's like, it just is what it is, man. On that, to where it's like, I don't know. Look, and you wouldn't even—I couldn't even see your face to gauge the reaction on that, man. But <laughs> <laughs> that is what that is, man. As far as that, to where it's like, it's a—you uh, can't, you can't be attracted to what I'm attracted to, and not. Um, it's like okay, let's just reframe it for people who like, um, for guys that like females. You can't want a, a confident woman and and not expect for her to have certain other traits that come along with that. Mm -hmm. right that it's like and it's like it's the same thing by what i tend to like yeah uh I, it's there's gonna be hair down there i mean okay. by the way and if there's not if there's not by the way that's dope too hey <laughs> no, listen, that's, dope. Listen. that's dope too though <laughs> I, I, I found out that for me, for me to go downstairs i would love for there to be no Harry situations. It's just ideal. A phenomenal. It's optimal. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Like, what? You know? Not the show. But then there are some individuals that don't like to manscape or don't like to whatever or are naturally that and that's all that they know. <sighs> I guess, you know? No, for sure. Just make sure you shower in first because I don't want no butt particles <laughs> in my face. <laughs> and I'm going to still shower after. <laughs> Listen, all of that. All of that. So are you hairy downstairs? Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, I can't expect somebody else to do something that I'm not doing. Like, I'm not, it's a, it is time consuming. Not to mention, like, dude, like, those dudes, by the way, the dudes, boy butt that is, like, pristinely, like, like, waxed or, like, trimmed and all that other stuff. I'm like, dude, like, I know that took work, energy, pain to do <laughs> that I'm just not willing to do. I actually, shout out to whoever, like, I don't even know if I need to do this, my ex. Uh, one of my exes, man, I did, uh, I tried it, right? Because I'm like, you don't know, don't knock it till you try it. Yo, I got waxed like twice just to make sure like maybe the first time was just real bad. No, twice. Not my thing. Never doing it. Nope. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> so shout out to the dudes that can. Like, I'm not doing it. Don't expect nobody else to do it. Like, What mm -hmm. does your guy think about this online persona that you have? You have. He thinks it's funny. Okay, so he's not, he doesn't get like jealous or anything. Does he read the DMs? Do you let him read the DMs? Like, yeah, he so he reads stuff. Uh, now granted, he's getting better at reading English, so some of them he'll actually like read and translate and that type of thing. Like, I know okay. some a lot of the stories he will, but also too, he's he's getting better to where he doesn't need to translate all of them. But some of them, like, we'll sit on the couch and just like go through together, like, we both just think it's funny. And I'm, I, by the way, I'm very uh, I keep tabs on that periodically just like, hey, look, just want to make sure you're still like, because if it is bothering you again, I want you to say something, right? But as of up to this point, he's like, dude, make that money, bro. <laughs> That's one thing I can say about like, we both do have a uh, work ethic and an understanding on, dude, bro, get the bag. Like, so it's like, awesome. like you do it, you're building what you build. 
So how has it been uh, blending the different cultures uh, with each other? Because you said Ooh, he's Mexican. Yeah, okay. um, he's blending. I think that comes down to more of a personality thing, to be honest, man. Like, I don't blend yeah. with much, right? Very, it, like, I usually polarize more so than blend. <laughs> if I'm okay. blending with someone, I usually, it's it's a I love you type thing to where I'm like, you know that I'm putting an energy to blend this, right? <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> it, and I only say that only because, for example, um, he is extremely family oriented, where for me, I've had, I've navigated my adulthood with less family interaction to where I've grown to be very independent to where it's like, let me say this, my family, this is an actual situation. Um, he's getting, he's developed, he's working on his body for his own personal goal right now. Mm -hmm. And one comment that his sister said to him was, man, you're getting very thin. And, um, that actually, that actually meant something to him. Like he actually like, you know, for like a week was like he, thinking through that. Meanwhile, for me, if my family were to say something to me in regards to my goals on any of that, it's like, like, I don't, it, it doesn't influence me at all. Like, honestly, um, and I think that's, again, just part of the journey. But so for, for the blending aspect, he's very familial. And so it's like for me to blend in with, you know, add more people into the circle and all this other stuff. It's, uh, it is truly because I have a, I have strong feelings towards him, not that it's natural. He's actually, again, he's, it's easy for him to connect with my, actually, he's not used to being with someone that is, is like, I am very dialed in all the time, where he's like, he is such a good dude. Yeah, we'll just leave that there, because I can get real wordy on this, but he's a good dude, and we're blending pretty well. It's just awesome. taking energy on my end. <laughs> awesome. How does one get involved for whoever may see this, wherever they may see this, how does one get involved with your uh fitness are you giving tips or is Hell it yeah. an online app what like how do i yeah yeah no just shoot a dm if you're actually like no joke um <clears throat> and this is i'm be real like ideally my who i want to work with are queer um i will work with uh queer dudes like trans transgender and also too i'm bringing on uh another coach to help me support again like queer females but it's like uh because i i'm a big believer you can't let me say it's hard to help people you don't understand and so for me, it's like, that's the reason why I'm like, okay, cool. this is my thing. But it's like, if you are queer and you're looking to build muscle or lose weight, just shoot a DM and we can take it from there. Set up a call. We'll go. So know. I could be in Africa and I could hit you up? Um, you can. <laughs> okay. No, you can. Um, uh, primarily. Uh, this channel is international. So it, yeah. it, it may pique someone's interest in Europe or you know, Brazil, wherever. So just have to make that clear to the people. I would be excited to work with them. Uh, th here's the only thing that I've found is primarily the businesses right now in UK, Australia, and the States. The only reason why is uh, even after trying to come up and, and I actually like reducing the price drastically, like significantly, the, the currency exchange rate, it just, it just, that's why I was like, I would, and I've so I've actually again for a lot of the dudes in Africa that have reached out, man. I just have like calls like, hey, look, this is what you need to do. And somebody in the country of Georgia reach out, like I'm like, this is what you need to do. Um, but it's like as far as like actually going along the path with you for months, uh, usually the exchange rate it just doesn't make it something that we can actually come to an agreement on. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I understand that. I understand. Yeah, that. sucks. But man. But the option may be there, depending. No, on for sure. No, for sure. Definitely. Well, I don't mind yeah. talking. So uh, I mean. definitely reach out to this to, to this brother. Do you see yourself um, getting married? Have you been married? I've Have never you? been married. Okay. I've had the conversation of marriage come up in multiple relationships okay. and um, said that that wasn't what I wanted to do. But uh, <laughs> I would be married. I, I can be married, but I'm going to be real. For me, I see marriage as a gift that I'm going to give to someone, not something that I need. And I know that that sounds probably off or wrong, but it's like the not way that my brain thinks, it's like I'm not, not I'm not, <laughs> oh, I got to get married. Like, it's like I don't have the whole Disney picture playing in my head where I think I'm going to get like the birds are going to come chirping and stuff when I get married. Like, no, it's like 
but I do understand it has value to someone else. And if the person I care about values that, it's a gift that I can give them. Yeah. We have so much in common. Uh, <laughs> a lot of this, a lot of this is floating over the the Leo situation. But I, I'm with you, like, man, this I say the same, you know. Yeah, okay. I, I really had this conversation yesterday about marriage, so that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm like, I wonder what this man think about it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people get people get married for various reasons, but I feel like we, there has to be a point and a purpose and a benefit to it just to occur. Um, I mean, I don't think it should just happen just because, you know, whatever. I don't know. But have uh, you been married? No. <laughs> no. And I have never <laughs> met anyone that made me think about marriage. Yeah. Um, like, I seriously consider it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like, what, what's what's going to change in our lives for us to have to go through this, this route? Like, what's happening here? Um, I've considered it. I've actually considered it. That's the craziest thing. I've considered it uh especially look twice i've considered it twice one of them was the mother of my daughter and the other one was just because we had been dating for two years and i was like i guess this is what i'm supposed to do but this doesn't feel right <laughs> like, like, i was like this does not feel right and then uh fortunately enough and she ended up blowing up uh to where i had a reason to get out <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it that way. I hate to say it that way, man. Oh my god! It, it, it just gets to a point where you're like, they're gonna mess up eventually. They're gonna say something eventually that's gonna make oh. it so easy for me to to depart. Oh, dude, don't get me started on that, man. Dude, look, this is me telling on myself, man. And you definitely please build on this if you want to. But it's like, I am also finding out, man. Previous versions of me, like. When I wanted out of a relationship, sometimes I would just do stuff like just like, and I would, I would like almost like when I should have just said, a, am not willing to tolerate this and I should have just ended it. Like I would just stay in the relationship and just like, yeah, like I don't really care. And so it's like, I would basically just wait until you would end up parting ways. And I'm, I'm just, once I realized that I, I could grow out of that, but it's like, it took me no, no kidding, probably until two years ago to even realize that that was what was happening. <laughs> I'm like, so now it's just like, I'm very, I'm willing to tolerate this in my life form now. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, yeah. and again, something we have in common. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think for me, it's like, I don't really want to hurt people's feelings or make people feel right. like whatever, but at the same time, I have to focus on me and what I need and making sure mm -hmm. that I'm receiving that. Uh, Cause we only have one life to live and we have to live Thanks. it the way that we want to. Um, for for you being so freely expressive on Instagram, what would be your advice to anyone that may not feel like they can walk on the Instagram stories butt naked and show their butts, you know, to the people or, you know, that are having problems with being themselves naturally? What is your advice? It, or is they do they have the same goal as me? Are they trying to make money or what's their goal? Just have a good life? Like what's the goal? In terms of just being freely, uh freely able to express themselves the way that you do. Embrace look, embrace being being you uh to whatever capacity that may be, man. Uh I found that for me, I am doing things that I already am comfortable with. Yeah, it is nothing to catch me at a nude beach. It is nothing, which is why it's like I don't mind being in my underwear for most of the videos, that type of thing. And here's the thing is, is uh, if you only, you don't need to even really, if you want to be more expressive, uh, I would just say start pressing into that just because it's like, bro, like, I promise you don't nobody care as much as you think. I promise you. Like, and you know, it's crazy. If I stopped making videos, you know, they'd be like, like, you know how, how like, you know, I'd be like, no one will care. <laughs> it's like, like, dude, like, ain't nobody thinking about you to the degree that you think that they think about you, man. Like, if you actually want to be more expressive, dude, like, and I think that that's just a good rule for living life. It's just like, Seriously. if you really want to do something, bro, like, oh, man, I don't know if you like Alex Ramosi, man. He's a business guy. He said, look, everybody that you not live in the life that you want to live for, they're going to die one day. And you're going to be old at that point. <laughs> like you're going to be older, right? Like whether it be 50s, 40s, whatever, right? Everybody that you're not being you for, they're going to die. And then what? Like you're just going to be like, dang, I really wish I would have done that. Or now I can like, you know, waste life because you're concerned about one or two people's like viewpoints of you. It's like, that's not smart. 
that's not, let me say this, that is not a good way to live, I don't think, because then you're miserable. You're miserable because you're not being what you could, what you know that you could be. And you're not even trying. Like, I know that because I was that guy. <laughs> Are you ever going to be on television or in the movies or or any of that? Wow, that's really wild you asked me that. So check this out. Um, I had a producer, so producer reaches out to me through my old agent. Uh, dude, dude gets me connected to this guy. We have the uh, audition. He says they love me, that type of thing. So yesterday I find out like, oh man, like <laughs> they loved you, they want you on the show. And I'm like, I am, there's like probably 95% chance that no matter what they offer me this week, I'm probably still gonna say no. <laughs> and the odds are, the reason why is because it's like, <clears throat> that it came to me honestly, like even a year ago, I'd probably say yes, but it's like, I'm building a company that I, that is genuinely like, actually, I like what I do. I, I like what I do. It is profitable. I believe that I can actually help people through this. And at this point I'm like, dude, like, I can't like see them, uh, three months of film would, t would destroy momentum. Mm. It would not to mention it would, uh, make a clear point to the people that are helping me. Uh, that I am solely about, let me just go grab the money. And fortunately enough, I've gotten to my, I've gotten myself to a place in life to where it's like, I got my financial base to where it's like, dude, like I'm doing what James wants to do long-term now. Like, I'm not just going to like reach out to something because it's like, and by the way, I've told a couple of people that, and uh, they're like, uh, oddly enough, they're telling me what they would do. Basically they're like, bro, like you might want to consider it. Think of the exposure, like, you know, <laughs> Just think of the money. Not to mention, they told me that this is one of those types of shows like Jersey Shore, where it's like they're gonna have the same cast for multiple seasons. And Gosh. it's like, I'm like, dude, like, and I told I told my my agent, I was like, bro, like, I'm I'm this is what I'm doing. Like, if you want, and I know this is now this is also this may be like a, a Leo thing, but I'm like, I did the audition just so I could be able to say like ego flex when I when I have a, when I'm telling this story one day, I'm be like, yeah, man, and I actually turned down this this fucking. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to say that I turned on a reality TV show. Like, <laughs> of course, I know I have an attractive personality. Like, of course, I know I'd be very entertaining to watch on TV. But it's like, I just wanted to be able to say, like, yeah, actually, actually, yeah, no, I got the spot. I just didn't want to do it. It's funny. Like, <laughs> I, I, I honestly feel the same way with uh, uh, a couple of projects that people want me to uh, be on or whatever. And yeah. I already know that I can't do it or that I don't really want to do it, but yeah. the thought of being like, ah, okay, sure. Yeah. Well, they want to be on the show, but you know, or whatever. I, I completely, I completely get it. So listen, I can talk your ear off for like hours and hours and hours. You know, I could get all into the sex lives and do you bottom, do you top, are you verse, do you all Where that. You go? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to have you on, no. uh, on the uh, thing too long. So I'm going to do a rapid fire real quick, ask you a few right. questions, and then we'll close it off so you can get back to your day. I'm ready. <laughs> Don't worry. We're still within the time slot. I, I did put a time slot. Uh, come on, time <laughs> slot. I love that. I love that all day long. Um, okay. So uh, I usually on my interviews, I do a, a quick little game called Pick One. Um, I give you two right. options. You have to pick one or the other. Um, you can't ask me in what reference. You just have to say one or the other. Uh, you okay. Can't both, and you can't say neither. You have to pick one. Okay. All right. R and B or hip hop? R and B. Bottoms or tops? Bottoms. <laughs> that was a quick. That was a long, long pause. Well, because I wanted to be like, are you saying like, what do I like or what? But I can't ask any questions. Right, there so. you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, kissing or oral? Oral. Uh, feet or whatever the op other option is, don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the other one is, <laughs> women or men, men, mom or dad, mom, friends or family, family, boyfriend or husband, boyfriend, TikTok or Instagram, Instagram. Wet wipes or toilet paper? Wet wipes. <laughs> yeah. Floss or just a toothbrush? 
Floss. <laughs> Your face is hilarious. Your face is soda or juice? Juice. Weed or alcohol? Mm. Alcohol. A vacation on a cruise or going hiking? Cruise. Okay. Intercourse yeah. or oral? Intercourse. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't no. want to uh, thank you so much for uh, taking time. Like, yeah, no, I want intercourse. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Mm -mm. ah, thank you for taking the time, brother. I appreciate you. I've learned a lot about you. I'm sure the people watching have learned a lot about you. Uh, hopefully, you will gain um, some more people in the DMs that are respectfully going to try to communicate <laughs> with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate you. And listen, we have, again, we have so much in common. If ever we are in the same state, we definitely need to connect uh, on the Leo side of things because you are super dope. Uh, is there any last things that you would like to say to the people watching? Uh, just wanted to thank you for the opportunity, man. It was good to actually like be on your show, and then also to, um, yeah, no, nothing else. Awesome, appreciate it. All right.